The Nasdaq and S&P 500 sell off after hitting record highs. The Dow closes with gains while the Russell 2000 rallies as its CPI inflation in June comes in at a three-year low. Asian markets trade mix. The Nikkei falls over 2% on a suspected yen intervention. But the Gift Nifty is also suggesting a lower start for the Indian market. Crude prices rise marginally to near $86 a barrel. Gold surges past $2,400 an ounce as inflation data from the United States sparks hopes of rate cuts soon. In an exclusive with CNBC TV18, the RBI governor says it is too premature to talk about a rate cut. He remains sanguine on the growth trajectory and says India is moving towards an 8% growth rate. He also says that he is currently not worried about bank money flowing into the stock market. TCS beats estimates in quarter one. Constant currency revenue increases by 2.2% sequentially against estimate of 1.5%. Margin shrinks, but not as much as feared. The management says almost all verticals in major markets have returned to sequential growth. HCL Technologies is expected to see a margin decline and weakest revenue growth in the first quarter. However, the company is likely to maintain a 3 to 5 percent growth guidance for FY25, with deal wins, wins expected to remain solid. Good morning in the Mumbai News Center. I'm Sonal Bhutra. You're watching Power Breakfast. Those are the top headlines. It's a Friday morning. We have a lot to catch up on in terms of global markets and our own cues as well. But first up, as always, let's take a look at the Asian markets. Uh, well, the Hang Seng is doing really well right now. That trade should come up for you on the screen. It's, de uh, it's up around 310 points. The Taiwanese index is seeing some uh, losses right now. So it's a 400-point cut on the Taiwanese index. Quite a mixed picture, a lot happening in the Japanese market with intervention in yen as well. So that is something which is keeping uh, Nikkei uh, on the back foot today. It's down 2%. Remember, yesterday it did touch a record high by crossing that 42,000 mark. So there is some uh, retrieval from those levels as well. Gift Nifty, that should come up for you on the screen because that will indicate the moves for our own markets. It's a 56-point uptick that this index is suggesting right now. And remember, we did see that sharp recovery from the lows yesterday, uh, closer to the trade close. And that is something that will uh, be important to track today as well. And in the U.S. markets, Wall Street ended mixed with Dow Jones being the outperformer, gaining 32 points, S&P losing 50 points, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq down 2%. S&P and Nasdaq broke seven-day winning streak and they suffered their worst day since April 30th. On the data front, CPI inflation in June came in at the lowest level in about three years. The consumer price index rose at 3% YOY, while core inflation increased 0.1% monthly and 3.3% from a year ago. Rick Santelli breaks down the data. Now, June CPI down one-tenth of a percent on headline, down one-tenth of a percent. That would equal where we were on May of 2020. To find a lower number, you have to go to April of 2020 when it was at its extreme of minus eight tenths. So that is the first time we've had a minus sign there. That's actually deflation, not necessarily disinflation. Now, if you strip out the all-important food and energy, it's up one-tenth, up one-tenth. That's a little cooler than we were expecting. Up one-tenth would be the lightest going back to January of 21. In August of 21, you would have equaled up one-tenth. Now, let's look at year over year. Year over year has been a bit lower in the past, and now it equals that level, 3%, 3%, 3% equals that low I was referencing before I saw the data, which was June of 2023. To find a smaller number, you're going to March of 21 when it was 2.6. If you look at year over year core, 3.3%. Our last look was uh, three years, more than three years at uh, the lowest level, 3.4. So 3.3 will hold that moniker. It is also uh, the lightest level going back to April of 21. Now let's look at claims, shall we? Initial claims, 222,000. That's minus 17,000 from the revised 239,000. 222,000 is the smallest initial claims since the third week in May. And finally, on continuing claims, it is now up for above 1.8 million for the fifth 
consecutive week, 1,852,000. And that, of course, comps to last week when it was 1,856,000. And that would have comped back all the way to... You're going back to November of 21, November of 21. So we obviously see interest rates moving lower. That 10-year was hovering right around 428. It's now hovering at 419. It's going to be very important to see which side of four and a quarter it closes at, even though it's well below that level right now. Okay, all right. Uh, it's time to listen into some experts discussing their outlook and expectations for the markets and the Fed. Listen in. Well, you're right. They were late to start hiking, but not too late. And then they caught up pretty quickly in terms of raising interest rates uh, from zero to five and a quarter percent, uh, basically within two years. Uh, but as, as you might recall, back in 2022 and 2023, when a lot of people were talking about recession, uh, our position was we're in a recession. It just happens to be a rolling recession with different industries getting hit at different times. I think now we're just in a soft patch. I don't think there's much risk of a recession here. Look, historically, recessions are caused by the, the Fed tightening monetary policy. So check that. That's certainly been the case. Uh, then that in turn causes a financial crisis. We had one uh, in March of last year. But then that financial crisis turns into a credit crunch. And it's the credit crunch that caused recessions in the past. We're not seeing that situation right now. Fed doesn't target price levels. Yeah. It targets inflation, right? So if there is a one-off shift up in price levels, the Fed isn't going to try and bring those prices back down because in order to do so, they would just have to inflict too much pain on the economy. Um, so auto insurance prices could remain elevated, but inflation could cool off in coming months. And the other thing worth noting is that auto insurance in CPI is not what goes into the PCE. All right, that's the global market action and opinion. But how will these overnight cues impact our own markets? We have a research team joining in to tell you the trade setup and the stocks that will be in the news today as well. Hey, guys, a very good morning and happy Friday to both of you. Uh, Hormaz, let me come across to you first up. Uh, what is the market setup looking like today? Well, the market setup looks positive, but it's pouring out here in Mumbai and the bulls would definitely <laughs> hope that some of the pouring gets translated into gains as well from the IT pack. We'll get to that in just a bit. But th this entire week, the Nifty has followed a template. It makes a low and then the dips get bought into. But the Nifty is confined in a very narrow range and that range all through this week has been 24, 140 on the downside and 24 460 on the upside so it's this 300 point range in which the nifty has been trading all through this week and as you can as mentioned the, the entire week the nifty is absolutely flat it's not gone anywhere it's 21 300 is where it has been it closed last week at the same levels as well but the nifty bank though has been the underperformer and that the nifty bank index has been down seven tenths of a percent and despite that the nifty has been relatively flat now some of the the big the result reaction today to watch out for will be tcs because it was a strong quarter the the brokerage commentary is also positive. The management commentary is positive, and that may also rub off on the entire IT pack. And the, there are six IT constituents uh, companies in the Nifty 50, so that might have bearing on the Nifty moves today. Also, subject to how the other heavyweights uh, react in today's session. Some other result reactions today come from Anand Rathi, GTPL Hathaway also reported results after market hours yesterday. HCL Tech comes out with results today, as does Ireda. That will be the one to watch out for. Five Pesa Capital also reports results, but also watch out for the PSU names. The Nifty PSU index is back in the reckoning. It made a record high yesterday, recovered all the losses that it made on the 4th of June. So that will remain in focus. It's gaining for seven days in a row now. So we'll watch out for that. And some other cues, the CPI IP data from India comes out later this evening as does the SIAM auto data. So we'll keep an eye out on that. The US market handover, the Nifty, the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq ended lower, but the small caps did very well yesterday uh, on Wall Street. And the GIF Nifty too is indicating a pretty positive start for our own markets. The question though remains, will those gains sustain? Okay, all right. Uh, so that's what the market setup is looking like. Uh, let me go across to Sudarshan. Some more stocks in focus today. He has that list. Good morning. Morning, so we'll start with IT major TCS, which reported its Q1 earnings. Earnings were largely better than estimates. Constant currency revenue growth has committed 2.2% versus an estimate of 1.5%. Margin has declined 130 bips versus an estimate of 150 bips decline. And company has reiterated that FY25 will be better than FY24. Even headcount has gone up by 5,452 after a company has seen three quarters of decline. Anandrati, it was a strong Q1 earnings, achieved 96% of FY25 
5 AUM guidance in Q1 itself. AUM is up 16.3 percent at rupees 69,000 crore. Net inflows are up 90 percent. Equity MF net inflows are up 170 percent sequentially. GTPL Hathaway revenue has fallen 73 percent. Margin is down 200 bips year on year. Maruti will be in focus as UP government is likely to issue clarification on its hybrid card policy and clarification might be for the category and price range that will be exempt from road tax. Brigade has launched 948 single bedroom project in Bengaluru and revenue potential is seen at rupees 400 crore. Vodafone Idea, ATC Telecom Infra to convert its, convert its optionally convertible debentures. 16,000 OCDs will be converted into shares worth rupees 1,600 crore at a price of rupees 10 per share. These are the stocks that might be in focus in the trade today. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us and prepping us up for this trading day ahead. Let's slip into a break now. Up next, IT Bellwether TCS kicks off the earnings seasons and it reports its quarter one numbers. We'll get you the analysis on the other side. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast in an exclusive conversation with CNBC TV 18's Lata Venkatesh. The RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das spoke about the stock markets, extension of his tenure, and a lot more. Listen into a few excerpts from that conversation. Whether it is stock markets or the bond markets, or you know, so many components are there, so many segments of the economy. We look at what spillovers they will cause. Now, so far as the banking sector is concerned, we are very closely, you know, we monitor all banking, meaning the credit sector yes, yes. or the credit growth, mm -hmm. all that is, you know, this segment is concerned. We very closely watch this position, in fact, much closely than it was, uh, you know, a few mm -hmm. years ago, much more closely than a few years ago. And whenever we see possibility of a, put, you know, whenever we see some early signs or whenever we feel that a few months down the road there could be a problem in this particular sector or subsector, we act. And an example is the unsecured credit no. where we took action and last year in November. Rates. And we, we increase the risk weights and the results are there to see. Okay, that's exactly what I'm saying. See, the FNO volumes uh, was something that troubled government, RBI and SEBI. And SEBI has appointed the Padmanavan committee uh, on it. So, do you have this fear that bank money could be fueling uh, the stock market rally? And therefore, is there a case for higher risk weights? or even to keep the interest rate you know on watch you see so far as bank money going to sort of uh, create some you know giving some boost to the uh, to the stock market etc is concerned uh, the, you know the exposure limits of the banks to the stock market individual borrowings from let us say nbfcs which were very uh, very high earlier for participating in ipos or for yes. taking, going to the stock market you know, uh, mm. the IPOs or yes. for FPOs, whatever, even there we have put a limit of one crore. Mm. It was all done some two years ago. Yes. It's not something we did mm. yesterday. Mm. So therefore, at the moment, so far as the, from the point of view of the credit sector, there are no major concerns. Okay. You don't think fresh uh, controls are needed? And in any case, banks uh, have their own, uh, you know, end use monitoring. Mm. Only some amount of, you can say, some amount of... Uh, unsecured credit may go into the stock market exactly may go but so far as unsecured credit is concerned we have already come out with so you know yes, we have provided risk for rates. additional risk weights and the overall growth of unsecured credit has started moderating so you don't think more is needed uh, that i cannot say as and when something is because it all depends on the numbers and the future outlook so we keep on constantly evaluating as and when some measures are required. I can assure you that the Reserve Bank will be proactive. Okay. You're, you're not done with risk weights. Depends on how the situation plays out. Three members, external members, their last meeting is in August. And then uh, I think your term is December, Patra's uh, term is still January. The whole NPC changes. Not just for that reason, but that is a very good reason to continue you. So that there is continuity in the NPC and, you know, a job well done. Why should the government disturb? Have they uh, intimated to you anything, anything at all? See, it is like We this. would like you in Wind Street. That's no, no. why I'm asking. It's like this. 
when there is an assigned, you see, first thing is institutions are bigger than individuals. Whether it is the Reserve Bank as an institution or it is the monetary policy as an institution, the institution is bigger than the individuals. The institutions develop their own momentum, their own discipline, their own principles, guidelines. So institutions will always continue to function. Now coming specifically to my this thing, you see when I am on a particular job, I focus on that job. I am not distracted by other things. Or to use the analogy of cricket, <laughs> when I am out there batting, I would rather, fo I rather focus on my batting and not think whether I am there in the next match or not. <laughs> So it's that but way. But they have not intimated anything at all about, uh, you know, the post-December uh, person in RBI or your uh, position. No intimation at all from our, the government. No, I think, uh, you know, it's again, uh, I mean, the question is, uh, I think I said it elsewhere also. Uh, I'm, and as, as I told you, I'm just focused on my batting currently. Okay. Indication, no indication, it doesn't matter to me at all. I am currently in a job. My focus is completely on that job. I try to follow the principles of Arjuna, okay. remain co continuously focused on the job at hand okay. and not get uh, distracted by anything else. Okay. And I'm not saying it to sort of make it a kind of a cliched answer or anything. No, this no. is what I really mean. I Okay, that is the word coming in from the RBI governor. Of course, we'll keep getting your excerpts of that exclusive conversation through the course of the day on CNBC TV 18. But with that, let's move on. Top business leaders and newspapers gathered at the CNBC TV 18 CII Budget Town Hall to put forth their expectations from the upcoming budget. A higher capex allocation to spur consumption, incentives to boost skill power, manpower were some of the demands put forth by the industry. India Inc. also pushed for the sunset clause on the 15% concessional tax scheme for new manufacturing companies to be extended by five more years. Consequence to COVID, we have seen the cost table hmm. and a lot of it because of external factors has actually gone up. And because of that, there is a challenge on uh, uh, consumption across the world. As far as rural is concerned, Given that cost of everything has gone up, what CII is recommending is that the amounts through direct, direct benefit transfer, mm -hmm. the amounts through Manrega and uh, income tax at the lower end, lower end. Below 20 lakhs, should, there should be some relief in and, and all the other areas should be increased. Our last five years have seen the early benefits of schemes like the PLI scheme. Mm. Uh, there have been some uh, mistakes along the way also which need to be corrected. I hope we see a version two of that and while we know the budget is for the year, but I hope there's a direction for the next five years. What industry needs is a clear glide path of what to expect over say the next five, even ten years so that they can invest with confidence. Second around jobs, hmm. getting jobs and skilling. We were just talking to somebody uh, over lunch and you can't get people because most people have gone home and how do you get them back? I think this is another big challenge for industry. This 15% uh, income tax sunset clause, yeah. if you can push it back by another couple of years or maybe give it a five-year push, hmm. I think it's going to play extremely well. The external environment is positive today. If you look at the environment in terms of uh, uh, interest rate, they're going to yeah. fall. You go look at the, you know, despite all the trouble in the world, energy costs are almost flat. You can't ask for a better environment, but we now to need to capitalize and move forward. Again, an important conversation and we'll keep getting your excerpts of this. Uh, but moving on to the earnings front, TCS kicked off the IT earnings season, beating street expectations in the first quarter. The management says almost all verticals and major markets have returned to sequential growth. Reema Tendulkar is here to decode the numbers for us. Reema. TCS reports a beat on revenues and margins as it declares its Q1 FI25 numbers. Constant currency revenue growth for the company has gone up by 2.2% ahead of street expectations of 1.5%. This is aided by a strong ramp up of the BSNL deal because if you look at the internals, the India revenue has gone up by 14% on a quarter on quarter basis. So the top line growth is a function of the pickup that we've seen in the BSNL deal, but it's a beat on expectation. Margins too at 24 
1.7%. It's down 130 basis points on a quarter on quarter basis, but better than street expectation, which was expecting, which was anticipating a decline of 150 basis points due to the wage hike. One reason aiding the margin um, you know, performance is the sharp contraction in the subcontracting cost. Subcontracting expenses further decline, and that's pushing up the margins. Profits too have come down, um, have fallen because of the you know margin pressure, but better than street expectation. Two more internals I'd like to highlight. One, TCV, the total contract value of deal wins stands at $8.3 billion. This is lower than what we've seen in the prior quarter, which was $13.2 billion, but that's because last quarter saw a bump up due to the Aviva deal. $8.3 billion is still within the management's quarterly you know, deal win run rate of $7 to $9 billion. And on the supply side dynamics, uh, the headcount for the company has gone up after three quarters of a decline. So this quarter, they've added nearly 5,500 employees as attrition continues to further take down to 12.1%. All in all, it's a good showing from a TCS strong start to Q1 FY25. All right, some sequential growth is what we are seeing across verticals. Thank you so much, Rima, for joining us. Let's also listen in to the CEO, K. Kriti Vasan, talk about the key revenue levers for the quarter. So when you have a couple of quarters of degrowth, the contribution overall percentage will come down. And also you saw uh, the revenue coming in. Uh, you know BSNL is one of the key uh, uh, revenue levers for us. So when BSNL is non BFSI and revenue comes from other sources, BFSI contribution naturally comes from. And also stay tuned to CNBC TV 18 as we will be speaking to TCS MD and CEO K. Kriti Vasan, CFO Samir Sikhsarya and Chief Human Resources Officer Milind Lakkar today at 9.45 a.m. Let's slip into a break. Up next, we'll get you all the cues from the commodities market. Stay tuned for that. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18. Manisha Gupta joins us with all the update from the commodity space. Good morning, Manisha. Hope you had a great birthday. But what's the update from the commodity space? Bought some diamonds. Thank you for that. We had a great day. And uh, the commodity markets also seem to be having a great day, by the way, because you've seen uh, the U.S. inflation data come in slightly weaker. The U.S. dollar index has declined. And the U.S. Fed rate cut possibility has now surged to a 93% for September. So it almost looks like a done deal right now, except, of course, if you see some and the other data, which is not so supportive. So this is what has taken the gold prices to near all-time highs. We also have seen silver prices gain up by a percentage point in the overnight night market. The crude oil prices also are trading firm because of that and of course the strong demand. The U.S. gasoline demand and the jet fuel demand is now at a multi-year high and the crude prices are trading at a front month premium to the next month so that tells you that there is a near-term tightness as well. So strong going at this point in time and for many of these commodities we are going to be going for a strong weekly gain. Okay, all right. So that's what's happening in the commodity space. Thank you so much to Manisha for joining us. Well, let's go across to some city news. The city of Mumbai has woken up to heavy drains this morning and the IMD has issued an orange alert forecasting heavy to very heavy rainfall in the city today and on Saturday. Uh, some streets in the city are already seeing flooding, but public transport seems to be working smoothly with the bus services provider BEST claiming no route diversion so far and both the central and western railways claiming that trains are running normally. Okay. Okay, all right. Uh, on that note, we'll do one thing. Uh, we'll take your leave on Power Breakfast today, but stay tuned. Bazaar Morning Call comes up next.